Hello once again, Internet. It's me, Carmen, coming right back at you. So in light of the recent and very unfortunate shooting in Charleston, which involved the killing of nine black people in a church by white supremacist perpetrator Dylan Roof, the question has been raised by a lot of people, should the Confederate flag remain an integral part of Southern culture? Now, many, when they think of the South, they think of the stars and bars. You see it everywhere in Southern culture, Dukes of Hazard, and you see people flying flying around all the time when you drive through the South. And I'm not here to argue for or against individuals flying the Confederate flag, but I simply want to provide some historical context as to the history of the modern Confederate flag. But there's a lot of misinformation out there, so I figured I'd play my part in helping to sort through all that misinformation. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So to really tackle this issue, we have to go way back. Like, way, way, way back to the 1800s back, to the start of the Civil War, when the Confederate States of America succeeded from the United States because they were opposed to the expansion of slavery. And I think a lot of people will argue over that, but that's pretty much point blank why. But aside from that, there were three flags of the Confederate States of America, none of which I will point out are what we consider the modern Confederate flag, although they do incorporate elements of it in two of the Confederate flags. The first Confederate flag, the Stars and Stripes, has a very high resemblance to the United States flag, which is a lot of the reason why the Confederacy ultimately changed the flag. There were a lot of people in the Confederacy like, this looks just like the United States flag. We just succeeded from these guys. We want to get away from here. And they didn't really like that it looked so similar because to them, the United States values at that time were very different from their own values and they didn't want to be associated with that. The second Confederate flag, the Stainless Banner, which features a mostly white background with the stars and bars emblem in the top left corner of the flag, was the Confederate flag for several years after the first one was taken out of service. This flag, while definitely not looking like the United States flag, to a lot of people looked like a symbol of truce of surrender because as many may know the white flag by itself is the international symbol of surrender like if you put up the white flag in a war zone for one side you're pretty much saying look I surrender I give up and of course the south doesn't want to be known for surrendering so this led to the third confederate flag which is pretty much the same except they added a large red stripe on the right side of the flag shortly before the civil war ended so as you can tell even though the stars and bars is an integral symbol of Southern pride and of the Confederacy. It was never officially the flag of the Confederacy. The Stars and Bars was, though, the battle flag of the Army of Northern Virginia and was proposed at some point to be the flag of the Confederacy, but none of these proposals ultimately made it past, well, being proposals. So why is this symbol so popular in modern culture in association with the Confederacy? So fast forward to the early 20th century, the 1948 Dixiecrat political party used what we consider stars and bars in many of its political materials and really pushed the flag and popularized it. And many other groups like the Ku Klux Klan came along that used the stars and bars as an integral part of their group's symbols. Now let's fast forward to the civil rights movement, the early 1960s, right after Brown versus Board of Education when schools were starting to be integrated. Many states didn't like what they were seeing and several, including South Carolina and Georgia, decided to raise the Confederate flag at their state house grounds in protest of integration. And over time, the flag has been challenged some, but has ultimately stayed because it is so popular with the people in these states and they view it as an integral part of their own culture. And now today, the question begs once again, should the flag be taken down from the state house grounds? In South Carolina, they have decided to do this in the wake of the Charleston shooting at a change of heart pretty much. Because previously before, the governor of South Carolina had said, no, we're not going to take down the Confederate flag. Now, I just wanted to provide some historical context. I'm curious to hear what you guys think in the comments below. Should the Confederate flag stay or should it go? Should it only be in museums? Should it only be a historical piece? Or should it be a part of Southern culture? 
If you liked this video, be sure to leave a thumbs up. And you can find all of my social media links in the description below, Twitter, Facebook. I also put out a new post on my blog recently. There's a link to that in the description too. I hope all of you have a good one and peace out.